Hey, welcome back, everybody. We're here with Senator Elizabeth Warren. Senator, um, uh, b b before we go on to the Senate and Mitch McConnell and the post office, I, I want to ask you about Joe Biden and big business, because big business was afraid of you. My friends who are bankers are afraid of you. But Wall Street's fine with Joe Biden. Are you fine with Wall Street being fine with Joe Biden? Look, how could anybody be afraid of me? All I want is oh my everyone God. to follow the rules. Come on. <laughs> That's what they're most happen? afraid of. We got 77 days, 77 days. We're going to get Joe Biden elected. OK, yeah, but you're cool with the Joe that like big Hollywood tech. Wall Street, they're fine with Joe Biden. No problems there. 77 days. 77 okay. days. 77 days. I don't think she's hearing my mic. I don't think no, she's hearing. No. I don't think she's hearing my question. Have, I think have there's me another... back tomorrow, and I'll tell you. 76 days. 76 okay. Days. All right. Let's let's move on there. Okay. Now, one of the biggest stories right now is the postal crisis. Yeah. That uh, postal office is always under some strain. But uh, Louis DeJoy went in there, started tearing out uh, sorting machines, taking away post boxes from the streets, cutting overtime, mail trucks going out only 30 percent full. Yep. What? So it, you've called for Mitch McConnell to bring the Senate back and to haul in DeJoy to find out what's going on here. What do you want to ask him? So, look. I, there's multiple things we need to do here. Let's start with the fact that DeJoy's got problems on his own. Uh, you know, the way he got this job is that he was a big fundraiser for Donald Trump. He made big contributions. Then it turns out he has all these conflicts of interest with the post office. He has investments in the companies that compete with the post office. He does business with the post office. So the first thing I started out with is I want an inspector general to do an investigation because you're not allowed to do this when you work for the federal government. Is there so, still an inspector general in the post office? Do yes, there him? is in the post office. This is one that Donald Trump has not yet fired. Um, so I want to stay on that. But then what we have to do is we have a board of governors for the, postal, uh, for the post office. They can insist that all of the actions that DeJoy has taken be reversed and they can fire him. So I want to see people step up and do their jobs. How do you get we, those? How do you get those guys? And I assume they're guys. How do you get those guys to do it? We do like, it. How do you force them? It, this is what public pressure is all about. Look, do you think that DeJoy is is testifying next week in the House because he wants to? Because he thinks that's going to be fun? He's doing it because there has been huge public pressure. People have spoken out. Democrats, Republicans, independents have spoken out. It's been in all the news. It's been everywhere. We stay on this. We get our post office restored, and it's critical. Seniors who are getting medicine, getting pension checks through the mail, but also so that everyone will be able to vote safely by mail. Now, b before politics, you were a public school teacher. I'm sure, I'm sure you enjoyed seeing uh, Dr. Jill Biden in there in her old classroom. I did. I did. Everyone's struggling with school reopenings right now. Yeah. And it's totally understandable that people want kids to go back, go back to school, not only for the children's education, which is so important, but because we don't have universal child care in the United States and the people can't go back to work to start the economy. Um, what do we need to do to keep the teachers safe and the children safe? So look, the, the first thing is you've got to have the right structure for doing this. And that means any decision that's being made, you've got to have the teachers, the staff, the custodians, the bus drivers, as well as the parents at the table. Uh, you can't make a decision without having them there. The second part is Congress needs to put up the resources for this. It's going to be more expensive to bring our children back safely. Uh, cleaning supplies, smaller classrooms, more teachers, got to get people divided, uh, fewer kids on a bus. It's time for Congress to step up and make sure that our schools have got the money they need. And then testing, 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 and contact tracing so that if somebody does get sick, you know about it right away, you can shut it down, you can isolate people. That's how we prevent the spread of this virus. It's... It's just good public health backed up by the resources to be able to follow through. That's what it's going to take to open our schools safely. Um, well, Senator, always good to see you. It's always good to see you. I look forward to the next time uh, you know, we can have a beer together. 
or Michelob Ultra, whatever, whatever, whatever it is. I, I you dissing my drink. I shouldn't speak. I, I drink Bud Light Lime, the, the manliest fruit flavored diet <laughs> lager available without a prescription. There you go. Well, <laughs> Senator, uh, good luck with the next 77 days. That's after midnight, 76 days. Done. All right. Senator Elizabeth Warren, everybody. We'll be right back with a performance by Regina Spector. Stick around. <laughs> 